This is a short video about the monotone conversion serum. So we're gonna say sequence Xn is monotone if either one, all the terms in the sequence are increasing. So like in symbols, um, you would say Xn is less than or equal to Xn plus one, the next one, for all natural numbers. Uh, or we'll say it's monotone if all the terms are decreasing. So Xn is larger than the next term for all natural numbers. So either one of these two things and you have a monotone sequence. So to give you an example, Xn is one over n. I know that as n gets big, this is decreasing. So uh, that means that it's monotone. Um, similarly, something like minus one to the nth power, that's always bouncing back and forth between when n is one, your first term is minus one. Then the next term is one, then it's minus one, and then it's one. So this sequence, it's not increasing and it's not decreasing. Therefore, it's not monotone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna characterize what can we expect out of monotone sequences. So the monotone convergence theorem tells us that a monotone sequence X then converges if and only if uh, it's bounded. So maybe what I could try to do, oh, there's two more parts of this. So moreover, one, if your sequence, I've already assumed it's monotone, which means that it's either increasing or it's decreasing. So if it's increasing, then I can also tell you what the limit of the sequence should be. The limit of the sequence should be the supremum of all the points in your sequence. And part two, uh, if Xn is decreasing, remember that's the other condition to be monotone, you gotta be one or the other. So if your sequence is decreasing and bounded, then I can tell you the limit of the sequence. It is the infimum of all of your points in the sequence. Zoom out a little bit. There's my picture. Cool. So what have I got? Just what is the monotone convergence theorem trying to say? And I'm going to do this highlighting. Uh, what if you have an increasing sequence? So that's my dots here. And then moreover, they're bounded, right? So the fact that it's bounded means that there's some number m that is larger than every single term in your sequence. And so uh, what are we saying? Well, if, if the red dots are always increasing and they're bounded, well, they've got to level off somewhere. And so, sure, in my picture, they level off here. So I tried to draw this picture to imply to you that, you know, there's lots of different numbers that are a good bound for your sequence, but uh, this one, the least upper bound, right, that'll be actually the limit of the sequence. And that's what is my orange line L in that case over there. So what I wanted to do is try to prove this. So the proof of this, so this is an if and only if, right? So it's a biconditional, so you gotta go forwards and backwards. So forwards, if you have a convergent sequence, then we already know that convergent sequences have to be bounded. So this set is bounded because this is convergent. That was a result from an earlier video. So the rest of the proof is devoted to the other direction. So suppose that your sequence is bounded and it's monotone. And what we wanna to try to do is show that this thing converges. Well, there's two parts. I accidentally called this A, I probably should have called it one. Let's assume that Xn is increasing, right? So let's say I have this one. So it's increasing and bounded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that it converges to the supremum of all the limit points, or I'm sorry, all the sequence points. So let's try and do that. So since Xn's bounded, you know that there exists some number M uh, such that M's bigger than all the points in your sequence. So by the completeness of supremum property, I know that uh, any set that's bounded above has a least upper bound. And remember, we call that the supremum of that set. So I'm gonna denote the supremum of all the points in the sequence by X star. So I know that it exists, it's a real number. And what we're gonna to try to do is show that, well, the sequence Xn converges to X star. And remember, that's what part one above says. Well, to show you know, that the limit of the Xn's is X star, we're gonna try and do that with the epsilon definition. So let's let epsilon be some positive number. So X star, remember, is the least upper bound for the points in your sequence, is what this is trying to say right here. So therefore, a little bit less than X star is not an upper bound for the points in your sequence. And so X star minus epsilon cannot be an upper bound for this set of points in your sequence. Well, what would that mean then? Well, that means there's gotta be a whole bunch of points in here that are bigger than X star minus epsilon, since that's not an upper bound. And so there exists some natural number. You can go far enough out in your sequence so that um, eventually you get past X star minus epsilon, right? X tends larger than that. And in fact, uh, what else do you know? Remember, the sequence is assumed to be increasing. So for every index larger than this capital N here, you're also gonna have a similar in uh, inequality like this. And so thus for all N larger than that capital N, X star minus epsilon is less than Xn. So what are we gonna do now? Well, finally, I'm just copying and pasting that inequality right there. 
I know that well, every point in the sequence is less than the supremum, x star. And finally, what if I added a little bit to x star? Well, that's less than epsilon, uh, x star plus epsilon. So what do you want to focus on here? What did we just show? We just showed that every point in my sequence eventually will be between x star minus epsilon and x star plus epsilon. So another way to say that is well, xn minus uh, x star is less than epsilon whenever your index is big enough, whenever you're far enough out in your sequence. And so again, remember, that says that the limit of the xn's is equal to x star. So we just proved number one above. So number one, which is up here. So we just proved this right here. So I'll try to go back down. Again, sorry, I'm going to be scrolling a lot here. So uh, now we'll do part b. Assume that xn is decreasing. And this is, I should have labeled it number two probably. Let's assume that it's decreasing and bounded. Well then, let's not work too hard minus xn would be increasing and bounded. And we just got done proving that such a thing converges to the supremum of the points in the sequence. So by part a, the limit of this sequence has to be the supremum of all those points minus xn. So what is that equivalent to then? Well, I know from some limit laws, this minus sign, it gets to come outside the limit. So that's all I'm doing right there. And I just copy pasted this to here. And now what we're gonna do is I claim that that is actually equal to minus the infimum of the points in your sequence. And I'm gonna draw you a picture in like 30 seconds to a minute to try to convince you of this, but uh, I'm not gonna give you a formal proof of that. You should try to do it from the picture though that I give you. But then why would this be good if you believe this? Well, look, then these minus sides would cancel and I would get that the limit of the xn's is the infimum of the xn's. So now let me try to draw you a picture about, again, why should this inequality, or, no, sorry, that's definitely inequality. Why should that equality be true? So I think I came over here to do that. All right, so what I've drawn for you over here, remember I've assumed that minus x1, minus x2, the sequence minus xn is positive. So that's in red for you there. And uh, well, the supremum there of the minus xn's, we just said that should be the limit of those, right? So I'll draw that there. Well, now let's think about well, what does the sequence of x1, x2, x3 look like? And remember, well, if it just differs by a minus sign, right? I could think of that as just reflecting, you know, over my horizontal axis here. So all I've did is I've just reflected straight across. Well, then what should the limit of these be? It should be this thing reflected straight down. And so that should be the infimum uh, of the xn there. And so the point then, what am I trying to say to you here? I'm trying to say if these two lines are reflections of each other, then that means that minus this, in fact, actually put a minus sign there. If you were to stick a minus sign on this, that's still a highlighter though, isn't it? <laughs> if you were to stick a minus sign right here, that would take this line back up to that, right? So those are reflections of each other. So in my picture again, I'm trying to say that this line and this line are reflections of each other over the x-axis, therefore these are equal. But again, you should maybe give a formal proof of that. Okay, so I've got a lot of undoing to do. So let's do an example. So let's let yn be this recursive sequence that's defined by, I tell you that the first term is one, but then every term after that satisfies this relationship where the next term is equal to two times the first term plus three, all divided by four. And so the question is, uh, does this limit exist? Does the limit of the yn's exist? Notice that I don't ask you like what it is yet. So in order to talk about does it exist, what we might try is the monotone convergence theorem. And so by above, how do you use this thing again, right? Well, this converges if and only if uh, it's bounded. So what do I need to do? I just need to show you that the sequence yn is monotone and that it's bounded, and then I can conclude that it converges. And that's what we're gonna try to do, right? If it's monotone and bounded, then it satisfies the theorem and I can conclude that it converges. So let's try to show that yn is actually bounded. And so, well, I'm told that y1 is equal to one, and I could compute y2, right? I could plug a one in for the ends, and I see that's five fourths when I uh, plug that stuff in. And uh, also I see that the y ends are all non-negative. That's pretty cool. But uh, what am I gonna guess here? I'm betting that uh, these fractions, two yn plus three over four, I bet they don't get any bigger than two. So I'm gonna try to show you that y is less than two for all natural numbers. And to justify that, to do this, that is just screaming induction. So we'll try and do, use induction to do that. So how's induction go? Well, your base case is when n equals one and y1 is actually equal to one and that's definitely less than two. That's pretty cool. 
So the next part of induction is to uh, lay out your induction hypothesis. So what is our inductive hypothesis? We're going to suppose there exists some natural number k so that yk is less than 2. And remember, it's our job to use this hypothesis now to show that the next term, yk plus 1, is also less than 2. So in order to show this, let's see what we got. What is yk plus 1? Well, by definition, I'm just you know using k instead of n here. So I'll plug that in. 2 times the previous term, yk, plus 3 over 4. And then now, what do you know about yk? Oh yk is less than 2. So why don't I plug that in here? So this fraction should be less than this fraction now, which is 7 fourths, and that is definitely less than 2. So by induction, our sequence is bounded above by 2. The next thing that I need to do in order to uh, claim that this limit exists, I got that it's bounded. Now I just need to prove to you that it's monotone. And what I bet is that it's monotone, that it's increasing. So since y one's one and the next one's five fourths, I bet these terms are growing. So I'm gonna try and show you that it's increasing. So we'll show y n's increasing. And uh, how are we gonna do that? Well, induction's useful again also. So what's the base case here? y one's one, and I already computed y two's five fourths. Well, y one is less than y two. Pretty cool. So our inductive hypothesis, what should it be? We're going to suppose that there exists some index k such that yk is less than yk plus 1. So I'm going to suppose that, you know, at that spot it's increasing. And I'm going to try, try to show you for the, the next two terms, which would be yk plus 1, it needs to be less than yk plus 2. So I'm going to try to show you. So uh, how are we going to try to show this here? What we'll do is, what is yk plus 1? I can write down what that is. That should be 2 times the previous term plus 3 over 4. But now, uh, what do I know? Well, I know that yk is smaller than yk plus 1. So when I plug a y plus k plus 1 in right here, this fraction should be smaller than this fraction. Right? Again, this is showing up right here. And so well, if you think about, well, what is this now? Isn't that 2 times the previous term to yk plus 2 plus 3 all over 4? And so in other words, a less confusing way to say that, that's just yk plus 2. So what do you got? yk plus 1 is less than yk plus 2. So therefore, again, by induction, yn is increasing. So by the monotone convergence theorem, that guarantees that yn converges. Next question. The limit exists. That's what we just justified. But what is it? Right? Monotone convergence theorem, um, it can be helpful sometimes. I know it should be the the uh, supremum of all the yn's, right? But I mean, that's not a necessarily an easy thing to compute either, right? If you ask me to, to compute the supremum of the set of these things, well, that's kind of goofy because that's a weird recursive relationship. So how do I actually just figure out what the limit is? All right, well, the, I'm gonna say y is the limit. Well then, um, so y is the limit of the yn. So what I claim is, well, y is the limit of the sequence yn plus 1 also. So like what is this? Think of this as a tail of this sequence. You might have seen that term before. What I'll try to do is draw you a picture. So if I assume that y is the limit of the yn's, that's my picture over here. So this is my sequence yn right here. And so what is the sequence yn plus 1? You're just starting a term later. So this sequence yn plus 1 starts here and goes onward. So my point is it still levels off at y. That's all I'm trying to say with this here. And so maybe you've seen a result too, like if a sequence converges to y, then every tail, every single tail converges to y also. So why is this useful for me here? Well, I've got a relationship between yn and yn plus 1. I know that yn plus 1 is 2 times yn plus 3 all over 4. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the limit of both sides of this equation. So if I take the limit of both sides, you just replace yn plus 1 by y. And you get to replace yn by y also. So what do you get? You get an equation that you could just solve for y. And if you solve that for y, you should get y equals 3 halves.